Crime Sector recently participated in a voluntary port state audit to see just how the Bahamas measures up against countries and to identify any weaknesses in the system. Our Janae and Noel Ferguson talked with Minister for the Environment Earl DeVoe who shared those results and an update on the thriving industry. The Bahamas is continuing to make a mark in the maritime industry. With the third largest ship registry in the world, Minister with Responsibility of Maritime Affairs Earl DeVoe says a recent IMO port state audit also concluded that the Bahamas remains in the top tier. As a result of the audit, um, we are in the top five in all of the critical categories and overall we were number one as a flag state. The, the top 10 flag states were number one in that grouping uh, in terms of port detentions and overall quality of register. The audit also called for some legislative amendments, but DeVoe says there is no urgency to put those measures in place. However, as with all successes, there are some challenges. What we've found is that growing the commercial fleet uh, in traditional ways will be a constant challenge for the Bahamas. We are, in terms of the number of flags in the world, our likely spot is probably that in the uncomfortably in the top five because of Panama, because of Hong Kong, because of Singapore, Liberia, and the way we have positioned ourselves. Yacht registry and airplane registry are two ways where we thought we could greatly expand opportunities in the Bahamas. And so by passing the Yacht Code and redoing the fees, we were able to position the Bahamas to compete with places like Cayman Islands. But perhaps one of the most exciting things happening in the maritime industry is the training of young men and women. DeVoe says that Campbell Shipping is playing a major role. Campbell Shipping Company is spearheading that and they're in direct association with the College of the Bahamas. The Prime Minister's office has agreed a lease for Silver Key for them and uh, they anticipate spending upwards of $20 million establishing the Maritime School. Their premise is based on the fact that Campbell Shipping owns and manages 15 ships worldwide, and they alone employ 2,000 mariners aboard their ships. They met with the Bahamas Ship Owners Association, and they sought and obtained a commitment that were they to establish this Maritime Institute in the Bahamas, they can look forward to placing Bahamians aboard ships. Janae Noel Ferguson, ZNS News. They've been around for over 50 years in the Bahamas, and cooperatives are still playing a major role in the socio-economic development of the country. President of the Bahamas Cooperative League, Cheryl Bo Moss, also believes the democratically controlled enterprises are gaining ground on other financial institutions. We're on a steady increase again. People have realized, you know, I look for financing, I go to the other institutions, I don't like how they treat me, it's not a family thing. I come back. I go back because I am a family of that cooperative. That cooperative is mine. Now, Bo Ma says that increased business is also helping to secure the financial future of members. We have cooperatives here that are million dollars strong plus just through members saving five dollars a month. We started off with five dollars a month. It's a miracle what you can achieve at the end of the year. Five dollars times twelve give you sixty. So imagine if you save a hundred, you have twelve hundred. Now the United Nations has designated 2012 as the year the International Year of Cooperatives, and in an effort to raise public awareness and highlight the role of cooperatives, a number of activities have been planned for the year. Well, among the activities launched was a jingle competition challenging persons to write a 60-second jingle promoting the positive message of cooperatives incorporating a Bahamian flair. Eight songwriters participated with the top finishers receiving cash prizes today. In first place was 21-year-old artist Jonathan Farrington, who received $1,500 for his effort, Neil Simonette $1,000 for his second-place finish. Meantime, Rosano Deal and Tyrone Burrows placed third, collecting $500. Congratulating the winners was Agriculture Minister Larry Cartwright. I'd like to commend and congratulate all eight uh, participants and say to them that um, their uh, presentations were outstanding. 
uh, reflected the theme of cooperatives and brought home to us what cooperatives is, is all about. And of course, at the same time, bringing some Bahamian music and the idea of our Bahamian culture within the, um, the context of the presentations. It's that time of the year again to give the gift of life by supporting the annual Heart Ball. The main event is one of the biggest fundraisers hosted by the Sir Victor Sassoon Heart Foundation. Right now, more than 11 children are awaiting surgery, but due to the lack of funds, aren't able to afford it. That's where you come in. Co-chairperson of the Heart Ball, Coretta Owens, says this year's event has been beefed up. You could certainly come to expect a lot of dance and entertainment. We have lo loads of prizes and everything. This year we've, ad we've added a DJ for the younger generation. So we have the live bands as we normally do, but we have the DJ to help us dance the night away. Um, we have a great food menu planned and everything from the Sheraton Hotel. We have wonderful prizes. We have loads of jewelry and everything on a silent auction for the ladies. And we have some great prizes as well for the men to come and select. Now, Owen says the annual Heart Ball has been extremely successful over the past four decades, and he's encouraging more Bahamians to support the worthy cause. It is the fundraising arm for the Heart Association. So all of the funds, we actually raise 97% of every dollar goes to the heart surgeries to help the Heart Fund Foundation pay for those children's um, surgeries. Most of our fundraisers come from the corporate sponsor. We're still working very hard to educate a lot of the younger generation and the individuals about the Heart Foundation for the main fact that says most people really don't recognize heart conditions unless it's born into their family. So it's not one of the rampant diseases that people associate with, but we're working very hard to educate people. But I mean, for those who do know, they totally support the Heart Ball and the Foundation very much. Welcome to tonight's edition of the Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Altaviz Munnings. Let's take a look at what's making business news today. Could the Bahamas benefit from Caribbean Marketplace 2013? Well, the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association President Joseph Forstmeyer believes so. The tourism executive told the local daily that the Bahamas was an excellent host for Caribbean Marketplace 2012 as the feedback was positive and there were more buyers this year than the previous three years. He noted that the success of this year's marketplace should go a long way in boosting the Caribbean's position in the world tourism market. With five months of training under their belts, two apprentices at Bahamas Striping were recently eager to lay the lines and arrows on a 58-bay parking lot for the first time on their own. The employees are 18-year-old Romel Davis and 23-year-old Tristan Johnson. Trainers explain that it takes a lot of confidence to lay those lines and employees understand that getting them right is a quality issue the company takes seriously. But as the young Bahamian apprentices are confident, so are their instructors. And for all of you traders out there, the Bahamas International Securities Exchange business will relocate to the second floor of the Fort Nassau Center of the British Colonial Hilton Hotel starting today. In international business, the United Kingdom government said it will not block bonuses to Royal Bank of Scotland executives as Chief Executive Stephen Hester decided to waive his award of £963,000 in shares. A Downing Street spokeswoman added it was absolutely essential that the RBS executive team was left in place to sort out its problems. And from the region, the European Commission on Thursday welcomed new ideas put forward by Anguilla's Chief Minister Herbert Hughes to boost the economic development there. Speaking on the first day of the 10th Overseas Countries and Territories Forum held in Brussels, Belgium, Hughes said 2011 has been another challenging year for Anguilla, but there have been great strides made in balancing the budget and planning public expenditure in the coming year. Remember, you can send us an email or join us on www.znsbahamas.com or become our friend on ZNS's official Facebook page. And that will end tonight's edition of The Business Beat, sponsored by Royal Fidelity. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Altaviz Munnings. It's time for today's Doctor's Hospital Health Tip. Taking a CPR and first aid class could help you save a life or the life of your child. Learning CPR can give you the ability to help in cases of respiratory arrest, choking, heart attack, stroke, cardiac arrest, breathing difficulties, and sudden infant death syndrome. The course defines warning signs of respiratory arrest and gives prevention strategies to avoid sudden infant death syndrome and the most common serious injuries and chokings that occur in infants and children. The course takes four hours. Doctors hospital trainers can come to your place of employment or schedule an off-site program at your work for large groups. 
To learn CPR, first aid, infant or child CPR, or basic life support through our program, which is accredited by the American Heart Association, call Doctors Hospital's Community Training Center at 302-4732. Learn to save a life today. I think I'm going to, you know, take that up as a New Year's resolution, almost February, but a good skill to, to learn. Good, yeah, yeah, you had a busy so. sports weekend? It was a busy sports weekend, and today two of our pro ball players, they're home speaking to some of the youth. So.